Hi guys, <laughs> what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I am so sorry that this video took so dang long, but here we are with round two of the color series. We're gonna be talking about how to wear and pair orange eyeshadows. Orange eyeshadow, first of all, I know y'all are gonna roast me in the comments for how I say orange. Um, I'm gonna say it about 12,000 times in this video. Orange eyeshadow is my all-time favorite eyeshadow shade. I love it, you can pair it with so much. This is the look I created today. I know my red one was very bright and very out there. I tried to keep the brightness, but to also tone it down just a touch so you can kind of get the vibe of how to pair it and how to wear it, and then you can kind of play with everything and play with the tones that you like and whatnot. If you have never seen one of my color videos before, check out the red where I share tips for how to pair and wear red eyeshadows as well as my color wheel video. I think that's so helpful and is definitely a prequel to the series, so check that out if you haven't already. We'll be talking about a bunch of products that I recommend in the orange category. I could literally make a video about how much I love orange eyeshadows, like a separate one, and talk for an hour about why I love orange eyeshadows, so I try to summarize it, and I hope this video isn't too long. Don't forget to subscribe if you like videos like this, and uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. Before we dive into the look, I just wanted to share some individual shadows as well as some palettes. If you are looking to do an orange look, these eyeshadows and palettes are going to be amazing. I will of course go through blushes, highlights, contour, lip shades, all of that um, towards down the line once we're done with the eyes. This is the color palette I have for today. We're not gonna be using all of these shades. Again, these are just suggestions, so if you are looking to buy some single shadows, these are a lot of my favorite single eyeshadows. You do not have to go out and get these by any means. I also have some palettes here that I think are really amazing and that you will like for orange toned looks. We will be working kind of in this realm, and the thing that I love most about orange eyeshadows is the fact that they are very yellow based and they just blend so easily. I find that they can really make any eye color stand out, and my ultimate favorite thing is that they can be toned down very easily as well. So if you find that something's getting really bright and really out of hand, you can throw in a warm toned brown and it really calms it down and brings down the brightness a lot, which I find that you can't really do with a lot of shades. It's kind of like they are bright and they are out there, but with oranges, they can go to different realms and that's probably why they are my favorite color to work with. So these are some of the orange eyeshadows that we have to work with today. One of my all-time favorite matte orange eyeshadows is Flame Point by Sugar Pill. We have Best Coast Scenario. And then you're gonna want a transition shade, so something that is in the realm of orange eyeshadows. Peach Smoothie by Makeup Geek is one of my favorites. I'm actually out of it right now because I hit pan and just ran through it and now I'm out of it. So I have a substitute um, for Peach Smoothie and that is Issues by ColourPop. This is another one of my must-have shadows. This leans, if you've heard me talk about mac and cheese eyeshadow colors before, I love mac and cheese. This is Chickadee from Makeup Geek. This is a very, what I call, mac and cheese shade. So this is going to be yellow and a little bit of orange, but this works really nicely with the other oranges. And then we have IOU from ColourPop. And I have Criss Cross from ColourPop as well, which is going to be a really deep, burnt brown orange. And then I have a few shimmery shades to share with you. This is in the spotlight from Makeup Geek, so this is gonna be a lighter shade that we will be talking about. I have a super shock shadow in the shade Flipper. Flipper is really pretty, highly metallic, look at that. And it does have that orange base to it. One deeper shade to talk to you about, and that is Scandal from Tarte. So this is going to be like a really pretty copper shade. If you're not a fan of single eyeshadows, you would rather get a palette. I have a few palettes to share with you today. First one is Beauty Rust by Colored Rain. It looks like this and it has a little bit more of a mustard tone in here, but it also has some matte shades for the crease, and then this really pretty shade that you can put all over your lid. Colored Rain eyeshadows are so amazing, and this set right here, this little sixlet, is great for that. So if you are like, I just want something that I can take on the go, not have to think about it, this one is great as well. I know this just launched, but I've already used it and have already fallen in love with this. This is Sassy Sienna's from Dose of Colors. As you can tell, it does have the variety of of shades so again you will be able to just blend these so effortlessly dose of colors is such an amazing eyeshadow formula it is a little bit powdery but they just blend themselves you barely have to dip into the pan because they're so pigmented it's just like an all-around amazing palette I love these little eyeshadow palettes because they are really thin and sleek so you can travel with them really easy this one is very well loved this is the yes please palette from ColourPop 
It doesn't even look as dirty as it is in real life. Like this is very well loved. Again, we have the variety of shade ranges. We have transition shades, matte shades. We even have a bright yellow that you can work with. So this is probably my all time favorite warm toned palette. I love this palette and I always take this with me and it's very, 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 very well loved. And finally, we have the Naked Heat by Urban Decay. This is gonna be a little bit more on the neutral side, not as intense of oranges, but it is still going to have that orange vibe there. If these other palettes are very bright and very loud for you, I would recommend checking out the Naked Heat. This is my favorite Naked palette. I wear this all the time. These are pretty much the two palettes that I've been wearing all the time throughout the year. Um, I take both of those traveling with me and this is the best Naked palette I've used used. If you've watched my color wheel video, if you haven't, I will link it in the corner and in the description bar. We're talking about bright makeup, so it will be a little bit bright and will be a little bit loud, but my favorite combo for orange eyeshadows is actually lime green. This is like a very yellow-based green. It will tie in with the yellows and the oranges really nicely, and it's not going to be too far across from the color wheel that you're going to be like, what the heck? That doesn't match at all. It actually looks really, really pretty on the eye. But this is Acid Berry from Sugar Pill. I also have a shimmery eyeshadow if you are not wanting a matte one. This is Electric Warrior from Kat Von D. Mine broke, sadly. This is gonna be a really nice shadow if you don't want a matte shade. You can definitely use Electric Warrior. You are thinking, you know what, the lime greens are just too intense for me. You could also try a really, really yellow-based gold. This is Come Clean from ColourPop. This is going to be highly metallic, very yellow based, so it will give almost a hint of green, but it will still be yellow and in the realm of the orange eyeshadows. Okay, I feel like that's a lot of information. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. I'm also not saying that this is the only combo that there is for orange eyeshadows. I love really warm toned magentas, purple, stuff like that with oranges. You could do navies. Really, the possibilities are endless. This is just the color combo that I'm picking for today. A color combo that I think really stands out if you're going to wear bright eyeshadow. You might as well go all the way, personally. That's what I think. I've had this saved in my phone forever since July 14th is when the screenshot says. And this is a look by Atlantip. She's one of my favorite Instagrammers. I get so much insp inspiration from her and I thought this would be a really cool I want to do something inspired by this So maybe the orange is in the crease with a little bit of raw power all over the lid She has the wing cut out, but maybe I could fill that in with Raw power and I want to do something on the lid. So we'll kind of figure it out We're gonna play around. I'm gonna go do one eye off camera really quick and I will be right back so I already went ahead and primed my eyes and I even brought the primer out just a little bit since we are going to have this wing shape going on. I'm gonna start with Issues and this is going to be our transition shade. So we're gonna wanna take this shade the highest out of any other shade and this is gonna help the other colors blend. And since we are using a very, very light orange for this step, it's going to tie in everything really, really nicely. So don't be afraid to almost like kiss that brow bone with this shade. And we're gonna start to, as you can see, I'm kind of swooping this out almost to the tail of my brow. So we can really get the wing effect going on early and kind of help the wing situation. You could totally use the same brush, but I'm just gonna dip into another one. And this is Chickadee by Makeup Geek, and I'm gonna be doing almost the same thing. Again, bringing this far out for the wing, but then I'm gonna take Chickadee just a little bit lower, and I'm tilting my head up. So I'm tilting my head up because I want to avoid getting this color on the lid as much as possible. We are going to clean up this the lid area, as you can see. We will clean that up, but we really want to make sure that we don't have to do any extra cleanup, like remove any color, or we don't want the product that we're putting down before the electric green to kind of get messy or muddy or anything like that. So we're gonna try to keep this area as clean as possible, which I know might not always be possible, but just try your best. I'm gonna go back in and give that one quick blend. Again, dragging it out. Onto the final shade for the crease, this is Flame Point by Sugar Pill. I would recommend a smaller blending brush for this. Um, if you are using the same brush for the other two shades, pick up just a tiny bit of a smaller brush. This one's a little bit more pointed than the other two, so this will really get in there and help to avoid getting it on the lid. You guys know the drill by now, we're gonna just wing this out. 
and carry this one a little bit lower than the other two. So if I'm looking at my lid, I can kind of see where I will need to put more of flame point because a lot of that is gonna get erased. So I wanna just apply a touch more. Okay, cutting the crease is a little bit tedious. So I actually found that lid primer is a great thing to do. So whatever you use for your eye primer, just take a little bit on the back of your hand. I find that concealer can be a little bit too unforgiving. So with eye primer, it's actually a lot easier. Then I'm gonna take this on a really, really flat brush that is also very dense. So we barely want any give to the brush. So that way we can go in and really carve out the eye. And to see that, I need to carry it up a little bit more. I'm also gonna wing it out. So feel free to take your time on this. I probably should stop talking so I can concentrate. So this is what you should have. We kind of want to look and make sure everything, there's no skips. If you find that you get skips, just drag the brush down instead of across. I find that that helps correct the eye a lot. Onto the lid, I'm going to take raw power now and start to build this up on the eye. I'm gonna go everywhere where the eyeshadow primer was. Another thing to note is concealer can be kind of unforgiving, um, especially like a thicker concealer. So that's why I like to go in with eyeshadow primer. We don't want it to be too crazy of a wing, we just want it to be a little bit of a cat shape. So now I'm gonna take a makeup wipe and kind of clean up this eye area, but I'm also gonna go right along the green. So you can see that we get to really define that area. For my concealer, I'm taking Tarte Shape Tape. I'm in the shade Light, and I'm just gonna apply a touch underneath my eye. I'm gonna work to blend this out. This is the Tarte Beauty Sponge. I really actually like this sponge a lot because it is quite tapered. It's really nice and bouncy, doesn't absorb too much of the product. I still love my Real Techniques sponges though as well. Okay, so once that's blended out, I'm gonna take a little bit of my Kat Von D Locket powder and petal. I know this is a different packaging than it comes in. I'm just gonna set the under eye area before we move on. Just kind of work that powder in. Moving on to the lower lash line, I'm gonna start off with Issues. And this is the transition shade that we used before. I'm gonna carry this all the way outwards as well to meet that wing. Don't be afraid because we will clean it up, as you can see, just a little bit later. Next, I'm gonna go in with Chickadee and mimic the same steps. I'm gonna go in with Flame Point and do the same thing. And then I really wanna blend this out, so I'm gonna just kinda of go back and forth with the other brushes and whatever products left over. If I need a little bit of Chickadee, I'm gonna grab some and blend that out. I'm gonna take Crisscross, which is going to be the deepest shade that I have for this collection. Just apply this closest to the lash line. But I'm not gonna carry it outwards um, to here. I just want this to be really deep. On the lower lash line, I'm gonna take Flame Point and once again, just kind of blend everything. This area is kind of looking a little bit messy. Take a small brush like this. This is from e.l.f. And I'm gonna use a copious amount of powder. And I'm using just the under eye powder that I use to set the concealer. We're just gonna kind of help to wing that out. This is kind of like baking, but we're not baking the under eye. We're just kind of using it to correct everything. We will brush this off in like two seconds. So don't worry if you have dry under eyes like me, please don't worry. We will just get rid of this really quickly. For my inner corner highlight today, I'm taking this really pretty quad from Linda Hallberg's. This is the Enchanted Secrets palette. I'm gonna be taking Ethereal, which has that really pretty green base, but then it almost has a blue purple reflect to it. And blue is opposite of orange on the color wheel. So it's gonna complement that area really nicely. And it's just gonna give it a fun twist on an inner corner highlight. So for my waterline, I'm gonna be using the Basquiat and Urban Decay Anatomy pencil on my waterline. This is like an orange, I know they have torch pencil as well that you could use, but we just want something that's gonna kind of match the lower lash line. Onto mascara, I'm actually gonna mix mascaras, which I know is so annoying, but I've been loving this combo lately. This is what I have on this eye, Marc Jacobs mascara even says my name, and the Ciate Wonder Wand. This has been like my favorite combo as of lately. Totally forgot to do this before I applied mascara, but this is my favorite pencil eyeliner. This is Hourglass 
millimeter eye pencil in obsidian and I'm gonna apply this on my waterline. Let's talk about lashes now and kind of if you, you totally don't have to wear lashes if you don't want to. I love lashes and even though I haven't been wearing them a lot lately, I just feel like this look would really sing with a pair of lashes. So we're gonna want lashes that flare out at the ends and kind of taper towards the inner portion of the eye. The reason we want this, I am freezing by the way, I have goosebumps everywhere, it is so cold in here. The reason that we really want ones that flare out at the outer portion is because it's gonna complement the wing that we have. It won't mess with the eye shape at all, especially with winged eyeshadow like this. It will almost elongate your eyes and if you put on lashes that don't complement that, it can kind of confuse the eye and it being elongated, it being bigger, it can just get confusing. Iconic lights are some of my favorite, as well as Iconics. As you can tell, Iconic lights are just a little bit lighter in terms of weight, and it's not gonna be as intense. Um, they also are a little bit fluffier, I feel like. I love both of these, and I use both of these all the time. We also have Flirt by Tarte, which I know these are kind of hard to see in here. They look like this. They're gonna be a little bit on the lighter side in terms of fibers, and they're just gonna look a little bit lighter on the eye. Love Tarte's lashes. Oh my goodness, they don't get enough love. From Rouge and Rogue are Slayer lashes. So you can tell, as you can tell, these are super intense, but they do flare out. So if you're looking, if you love super intense lashes and you're looking for ones that flare out at the end, these might be your kind of fit. But for today, I think I'm gonna take Iconic. I'm just gonna kind of position it on the eye and kind of get the, see if it fits the vibe of what I want. I think that'll look really cool actually. Yeah, these look super cool. I believe this is what Atlantip wore for her eye look. The one I was inspired by. So, if she did, that's super cool. Oh my gosh. Look at Celine. She's so pretty. Can you handle this? I cannot. I just clicked on my Instagram because I'm like, oh, why I'm, these lashes are drying? Like, let me look on Instagram and she popped up. She's so freaking pretty and I watch her Instagram story tutorials all the time. This doesn't need to be perfect just yet. I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll go in and kind of pinch my real lashes and my fake ones together. I used to do this and a lot of people do it when the lashes, when the glue is actually wet, they'll go in and pinch the lash. And I find that that actually just dragged down my lash and didn't look good when I would look down. So I like to do it this way, let the glue dry on the eye and then I'll go in and pinch once it's dry. So I will do the rest of my face and then come back and pinch the lashes so they definitely have plenty of time to dry. Otherwise, I feel like it just makes them slip down instead of form to the other one. You can also use an eyelash curler with that. While the lashes dry, let's talk about the face. I'm gonna contour as I normally would with a cool toned contour color. As for blush, I find Tone on tone blush is so, so beautiful. An orange blush just, I think, matches this look perfectly. Good few ones to share with you. Um, we have some ones from Nabla and ColourPop that look like this. So you can kind of go if you wanna do a lighter orange or if you wanna do a deeper orange, it's totally up to you. I really love the blush formula of Nabla Cosmetics. These are two of the shades that I'm always reaching for. This is Habana. And this one right here is Nectarine. I've been wearing Nectarine a lot lately. And then this big one from ColourPop is Main Chick. It, probably my favorite blush ever is the Kylie Jenner, Kylie Cosmetics X-Rated blush. You can, I don't know if you can tell how well loved it is. Look at that. Pretty much use this blush with the Nabla ones. That's pretty much all I'm wearing. If you are looking for a cheaper alternative to an orange blush, I'd recommend Milani Luminoso. Everyone talks about this blush. It is truly gorgeous. I do agree that it is lovely. And also we have Wet n Wild Apricot in the middle. I know Manny wears this blush a lot and it is, oh my gosh, it is 58 degrees in this filming room right now and I am freezing. So if I'm like shaking, that's why. Um, anyways, Apricot in the middle is a really gorgeous one as well. For highlight, you can do tone onto an orange highlighter or you can do something that will just naturally reflect onto your skin. It's totally up to you. Even gold highlighters are really pretty. Duochrome highlighters are gonna look beautiful as well. A lot of you have this. This is Fuego Highlighter by Dose of Colors and Desi and Katie. This is one of my favorite highlighters. Fuego just looks so beautiful. It's such a gorgeous gold. And the more you blend it out, the shinier it gets. So I really, really like that. 
Becca has their Light Chaser Highlighters, and this one is called Champagne Dream Flashes Bellini. So this is a little bit of the gold, and then a little bit of a pink reflect. ELF has their new Prismatic Highlighters that look like this. You get a really orange side, and then more so of a gold side. If you want to, you can totally mix them. This is in Siren's Call. We have a face palette from ColourPop. This is the Gimme More face palette. So as you can tell, we do have the tone on tone orange highlighters. You can kind of mix them, mix and match and get what you would like out of that. I've been wearing this a lot recently. This is Flexitarian highlighter from ColourPop. This isn't the tone on tone that we were talking about, but it is really pretty and highly reflective. If you cannot tell, it is going to be Again, not that tone on tone orange, but it is gonna look really pretty. For contour today, I'm taking the new Park Avenue Princess huge contouring palette from Tarte. I'm gonna take Princess Cut, and I'm gonna start to chisel out my cheekbones. You only need to do once or twice into this because it, it can get really, really intense and pigmented. For my blush today, I'm taking, oh, oh my gosh, taking Apricot in the middle. I love blush and orange blushes are amazing. Oh, this is so pretty. I'm trying to figure out what, oh my gosh. <gasps> it has like such a pretty gold sheen to it. I can see why Manny uses this all the freaking time. The kind of like just sitting in my drawer, I've used it like once or twice, but now I'm like, okay, I get it. I so get it. I'm trying to figure out what highlighter I want to do. Really love Flexitarian, but do I want to go tone on tone? Even though I know that Fuego is no longer available, I think I'm going to go in with Fuego. It's just so gorgeous. Maybe I'll do like Flexitarian on top. I don't know. I feel like in a mixing mood, you know? And I love that Fuego just can blend out, even though it does look really dark in the pan. The more you blend it, it's like doesn't stay dark. It just looks so, so pretty. My blush is a lot today. Oh my god, why did I apply so much? I just couldn't stop myself. Okay, I'm gonna have to take down this blush because that is a lot. Lips, 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 lips. You can, of course, I love a monochromatic orange look, so you could, of course, do orange with this. I wanted to, um, Mrs. Roper by Too Faced is probably my favorite orange. It's like such a good matte orange. Kathleen and ColourPop just came out with the Ultra Satin Lip in Rever, I believe is how you pronounce it. And so this, they're very, very similar. This one's just gonna be a touch brighter, I feel like, so you could do either of those. If you wanted a more nude, you could go with Tardis Park Avenue Princess. Since this does have a more peachy vibe to it, you could definitely do this. If you wanted something a little bit out there, but to tie in with the green, might I suggest Hazel, from Black Moon Cosmetics. I wore this in trying new products video and I really love this. So you could definitely pair this and it would tie in the green really nicely. But if you're like, oh my gosh, that's, that's a little out there. You think the orange is too bright. You could also use Sweet and Sassy from Dose of Colors, which is what I think I might actually use today. Ooh, this shade's so pretty. I love Dose of Colors formula. Really good. And I find I was in New York and I wore it all day without any touch-ups or anything multiple meetings, walking outside in the cold. I might put one of their satin lipsticks over this once it dries down. To help the powders all kind of set into the skin, I'm gonna be taking my favorite Pixie Glow Mist. And then for my setting spray, I'm taking my other favorite, the Kat Von D Locket Makeup Setting Mist. Definitely hold down this nozzle, atomizer, whatever you call it, sprayer, whatever it is. Hold it down all the way and you will get such a nice mist on the face. I think I might wanna put one of their satin lipsticks over this. I think I'm gonna take the shade Butterscotch. Okay guys, here is the final look. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot about orange eyeshadows, AKA my favorite eyeshadow color ever. Again, my apologies for the delay in the videos. Definitely check out how to wear and pair red eyeshadows and the color wheel video if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave and I will see you next time. Bye.